Hey there, Coach Joe here again for another question and answer session. Um, show two. Thank you for the questions that you've uh, submitted. I'm going to deal with another three today, a few from my team. Um, hope you like them. Question one is from John Parkinson. What is the best style of training to improve 5k slash 10k running times? Hit, interval, hill training, distance programs, anything else? And any advice for people on how to build up OCR distance from sprint super to beast distances? Okay, well I'm going to deal with the second part of that question first, um, which is advice on uh, for people on how to build up OCR distance. So if you don't know, sprint and super category is a Spartan race category. You're looking at between 5 and 12 kilometers uh, respectively there, building up to a beast distance, which is um, about half marathon, maybe more. Um, so building up any distance, I think, is good to take a sort of um, a step approach um when when um when starting out so say you're running five kilometers comfortably add on um maybe like a kilometer kilometer half each week and then on the fourth week deload so um for week one would be five kilometers then week two would be 6.5 kilometers then week three would be eight kilometers then on the fourth week bring it down to uh, four kilometers um, and that would be uh, per run that you do that that week so that, that would be like going from three five kilometer runs in the first week to maybe three 6.5 kilometer runs in the second week to three eight kilo kilometer runs in the in the third week and then maybe a couple of four kilometer runs for quality and for speed in that fourth week and then start um, again on week five but this time from 6.5 kilometers so week one would be say two to three runs at 6.5 kilometers then week two would be two to three runs at eight kilometers and then week three would be about 9.5 kilometers per run and then on on the, the week after that you're going to cut it in half and you're going to be at uh, what's half a 9.5 4.75 yeah and then follow on the next week and that's a good stepped way of um, building up your distance um, you know incrementally it doesn't have to be 1.5 kilometers it can be it can be less it can be more um, but just having that going up each week and then going down on the fourth week it's going to allow your body a bit of time to recover from the impacts of um, building your distance up um, you know that increased volume is going to sort of take its toll on the body especially if maybe your running style isn't um, fantastic so um, I would say that um, that's a good good approach for that now build, building up for OCR that's when you've got a combine um, a combination of, of strength and running um, so that would be you know something like it's not just going out for a 5k run if you want to have good, good conditioning for um, for OCR it's going out for a 5k run and then intermittently maybe throwing in a body weight exercise or some sort of strength um, you know, so like running 5k, you run 500 meters and then you smash out some burpees and you run another 500 meters and you do some pull-ups on this, uh, a branch for a minute or hang for a minute, that sort of thing. Um, it's going to sort of allow you to get that switch of energy systems that is going to be very helpful for obstacle racing. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the, um, in, in the show notes basically saying uh, with, with, with a link to, um, to, to a workout that can help you with that, that uses a combination of building up distance and building up body weight exercise um, as a means of prepping you for um, um, a sprint, a super or a beast race. So um, there'll be a link for that in, in the uh, description. Uh, so I hope that helps with that. Then we've got um, the first part of that question, which is what is the best style of training to improve 5K and 10K running times? Is it HIT? Is it interval training? Is it hill training, distance programs? You can use a bit of all of that um, really to help with speed, but like one of the simplest and easiest to implement ways to do that for someone who might be a beginner to running or you know starting out is gonna be using a form of interval training. Um, and I think, uh, a really good uh, gauge for that is, is is sort of like becoming aware of the different paces you can run at. So 
I think everyone's got a relaxed pace where that they if they ran at it they could probably smash out you know a distance of, of 10k and feel pretty good afterwards but like um, then there might be a step up from that where you know you're, you're probably going for it you know what I call the race pace um, and that's going to be you know at the end of a 10k of running that you're going to feel maybe pretty smashed up you know maybe a little sick and your muscles feeling um, pr pretty um, pretty ruined um, so I like to use a combination of say a relaxed pace and uh, a, a race pace basically for intervals in order to sort of build up speed and then take a distance so let's say 5k and then for one minute you're going to run at your race pace um, you know give it a really good effort something that's that's quite quick and then you'll have two minutes of um, of running at your relaxed pace to recover then you go out and smash out another hard minute and you do that um, you know repeat it over the, over the 5k um, and then the next time you run change the interval up so maybe you're doing um, a minute 15 at your race pace and then a minute 45 at your relaxed pace and do that you know across several weeks use the similar um, technique of um, the, the step technique that was used on the distance you know for the interval so get more intense with each week and then deload it on the fourth week um, and, and, and you basically will be creeping up to using more and more speed and you'll find as your fitness improves actually the relaxed pace that you run at will actually be faster and not only will you be um, more comfortable at your faster speed but your relaxed pace will be faster and you'll find that your times will be going down um, so that's a really good place to start for um, for, for getting faster um, over 5k's and 10k's and I find if you you know you've built up your distance um, to 10k and then you bring it down to 5 to work on speed when you next go and do a 10k that 10k time after maybe four weeks of speed training on the intervals is going to be quicker so I hope that answers your question JP question two now this is from uh, Rebecca Howard from where um, I really like this question so um, let's let's go into it now um, the strength versus speed loop Building strength equals building muscle equals gaining weight. So far, so good. That's the bit I can do. However, weight gain equals loss of failure to achieve a running speed due to extra weight. Weight cutting reduces strength. How is it possible to be both fast and strong? That's a really good question. So basically, um, building strength... If you're talking about using a external weight, then you're probably going to be in the... Um, you know the five rep range per set um, and not doing more than 25 reps in a session for a for, for, for an exercise so maybe we're talking like deadlifts back squats all of the compound movements and then um, you know other heavy movements uh, like maybe doing pull-ups and stuff like that um, the, the key is yeah it's not possible to be like optimally strong and then optimally fast over distance um you, you know at the same time but that's why we have periodization and periodization is when we set out our programming so we have a spell where we work on strength then we have a spell where we might, might work on getting size down and then you know we have a spell where we're starting to like work on running it, everything has a season basically and that's where it comes in handy to have an off season so you can work on strength because you'll find in any sport rugby football um, you know anything that you can think of there is an off season where people are going to work on their strength and conditioning um, that's the best time to do it um, because when you're in season you're just trying to maintain in order to um, in order to get through and, and then keep what you've got so you, you set aside a time of the year where you're going to work on your strength training and you work on it hard you try and get your numbers up you're not really worried too much about long distances and maybe you might put on a little bit of mass um, you know just depending on all sorts of things including your diet and how much testosterone you have all kinds of factors but you might put on a little bit of weight it's okay it's a strength phase that's what we're working on so you work on getting strong and then when it's time to, you know, that, that you, you've gotten strong, you've hit some numbers, you know, it's time to, to then um, take that robustness that you've got from working on um, strength training, that sort of added, you know, muscle activation and that muscle mass and then putting it to use for your sport. So that's when you start bringing in running and you're starting to maintain things. You'll find 
that anyone um, who does a hard strength training in in their um, in in their pre season, what's going to happen is that when they switch up their training, they get getting more into con- being conditioned for for their sport. The strength is going to drop off a bit, but w- with that comes added performance because you become more well rounded. Um, yes, if you're if you you've done a lot of strength training and you know you you've you've, you've hit a certain level. Um, that's up here it is going to drop to here when you start working on on endurance stuff but it's not going to drop in such a way that you're going to become a complete weakling okay so um you know you are going to keep the benefits from from doing that you know unless you completely starve yourself and you do insane amounts of cardio you know you you are going to have um some benefits from from um from doing the strength training so say if you started here and, and you're this strong, you do a strength program in your pre-season and you go to here, and then when your strength drops off, after you start doing some endurance, you might go to here. So you're not as strong as you were when you were doing your strength program, but you are stronger than when you started it. So there is a benefit to doing strength, um, and you you will take a benefit of that when going into, um, going into doing more endurance-based stuff and working on speed. Um, so that's when you would change your program up and then you get more into conditioning, you're working on your speed, you're working on your running. So that's how it's possible to be fast and strong because basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be working on all of these different um, parameters at different times of, of your um, your season or you, on your year uh, depending um, you know how, how organised you are and like how, how well you're planning it out and then what you'll find is like you don't you might not like be great at everything but like you'll move certain things up a little bit on each parameter you know whether it's your speed your endurance your strength and then as a whole you will be a a more rounded athlete because of doing this so i really recommend if you want to be strong and fast is get into periodization start looking at the time that you have between your races um, and you know when you have long gaps and think okay this is a good time for me to work on my strength or this is a good time for me to put on a bit of mass or this is a good time for me to lose some mass because I'm too heavy um, and it's affecting my speed you know Um, and it's all about trying to tackle these goals one at a time because when um, you get into the season um, you can't hit these as intensely because you're just trying to maintain the fitness you have and stay injury free um, and maybe you tweak a few things between races, okay? It's not a time to do huge amounts of maintenance on, on your fitness or, or certain parameters of it. So that's my answer to that. Um, and I will include a link in the, um, uh, in, in, in the notes, um, in the description about periodization and why you should have an off season and a link to my blog where there's some stuff about strength and conditioning in there. Hopefully that will be useful for, for some of you who are, are kind of new to that. I'm happy to answer any questions on that as well. So that leads on to question three um, from Mr. Keane, um, one of the members of my Spartan SGX um, uh, class. His um, question kind of leads on, I think, a bit from Rebecca's. He says, for leaner frames that find it difficult to put on muscle, how do you balance cardio and weight training to ensure that muscle is put down but not burned off again, particularly if you're looking for an overall performance gain of something like OCR? Okay, again, it's a peaks and troughs thing. So like, you might have a time in your pre-season where you work on putting a bit of muscle on just to make you a bit more robust and protect, protected across the joints, but also to help you with tasks like heavy carries and you know carrying your own body weight and climbing and stuff like that. Um, I think when you're talking about leaner frames, you find it difficult to put on muscle. It's it's he's talking a bit a little bit about hard gainers. Now a hard gainer is someone who um, finds it difficult to put on muscle mass and keep muscle mass on, and that's because they turn over macronutrients very quick. Macronutrients are what we get from food. That's your protein, your carbs, and your fats. So, in order to keep um, your muscle mass on um, part of it is going to be tweaking your training so maybe you lean more in a strength um, uh, sort of um, 
uh, bias to your training um, but the other part will be making sure you've got enough uh, nutrition in there and maybe that you've got a surplus of calories um, just a slight one just to make sure you know that your, your body is not having to turn over muscle ma mass and, and and sort of lean you out um, you know to, so you lose that muscle basically in order to, to sort of um, compensate um, I think also that like um, you know if you're if you're finding you're struggling with strength but you're um, you're uh, good at running then yes you're gonna need to stack your your training in a sort of I think a 60 40 is good and that works both ways so if you're if you're struggling with running but you're strong stack it as a 60 40 or maybe even a 70 30 in terms of um, how much your training is biased in the direction of your weakness so say like for example you're doing five sessions a week and you're you need to work on strength then you're going to maybe have three sessions that are working on your strength uh, training and then the other two are going to be working on your running and then vice versa um, if however you lack a bit of strength and you're lacking on running as well you're starting out the thing that you want to concentrate if you want to be good at OCR straight away is first just get that running down okay get an aerobic base in there and um, you know build up your distance and get comfortable with running then work on the strength stuff afterwards because the majority of OCR is done by running unless you're doing like a ninja warrior style um, you know uh, course or, or event it's going to be um, it's going to be mostly stacked on running, especially if you're doing something like maybe a you know Spartan Super or, or Beast or something. There's going to be huge areas of running in that. After that, that's when you're going to work on your strength stuff. So um, you know, I wouldn't worry. Also, um, if you are going to be good at OCR, and this is slightly anecdotal, I work with a pretty successful guy in our team who um, who at one point faced a crossroads between. Did he want to be really buff and be like Chris Hemsworth or did he want to be good at OCR? And I convinced him to go that way and uh, consequently he's had a few um, a few podiums because of it. And that's, uh, that's Jason, um, you probably heard of him. Um, but like, I think, don't worry about being hugely muscly for, for OCR. You want like a, a kind of wiry strength. Um, you, you look at guys like John Auburn and Thomas Blanc and... James Appleton and then Jason as well they've got a wiry strength about them uh, where they're not particularly um, you know like big and ripped like someone like Hunter McIntyre but they're, they're they're sort of big enough to move their weight around and they can handle a carry or two as well but they're they're, they're sort of you know stacked towards that strength of running okay so don't lose sight of that it's, it's going to be about um, you know the running when it comes to OCR and then working on that strength stuff away from your events getting it done in your pre-season and then sort of maintain maintaining it um you know um across the season because like um it's it's all very well being able to like go and break your say one rep max at a deadlift um but it's not going to be very useful on a on on a uh, like a race week um you know um you you want to be focused on the right things basically so, I think that is everything. Um, if you get, have a question, check out the email address that's in the description um, of, of, of the show here. And um, yeah, uh, drop me a line. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you found that useful. I'm going to speak to you soon. Cheers.